Hey, Composing Gloves here. And today we're gonna start building in Reactor. We're gonna start building our course. So I'm assuming you're following along in Reactor, but if you're not, that's totally cool. But if you are, I'm assuming you can get to this page. What I have here is I have a Harmer, and we're going to set up our first delay line, and I'm going to spend an emphasis on explaining why things work. That way when you're building, you know why things are happening, and you'll have an intuition also on what uh, the extra possibilities are. That's what's so cool about knowing why. So we're going to set up a basic first delay line, and some of these things, the whys are, are so fundamentally large, I'm going to do in a separate video. But I'll explain a lot of it here, and then I'll leave those pieces. But if you have a question, uh, feel free to ask it in the comments. And I will tell you if it's like if it's a thing I'm going to do a video on at some other time, uh, because it's like that big of a, a topic. So okay, what we have here is I have a Harmer. It's coming into Reactor, and if we pull it out like so, we just check in. So okay, things are working. So let's go ahead and start building. So remember from our course, we need to create a pitch variation in our chorus uh, by using a delay. And then combine that with an original signal. And this one, and this at this point, we are just going to create just a pitch variation. That's our goal right now. So to do that, we know we need a delay. So in order to turn on the keyboard shortcuts in Reactor while it is in plugin mode, we must double click on somewhere to type and then click away. And now our shortcuts work, in case you didn't know. So we're going to bring up a single delay. So here's our single delay. And what we're going to do is uh, we're not going to talk about like how the delays are built. We're just going to we're just going to take this as one of the base things that we have. So here's a single delay. It delays our signal, and it delays it in milliseconds. That's what the top part does, and then it takes our input. So if I were to bring our input into the input, um, wow, and take our output out to the output, uh, we would have right now it's going to behave. Uh, it's just not going to delay because we don't have a delay value. So we're going to create a control. And right now our control has, if we go into our function tab here, I'm assuming you know just the basics of moving around a reactor. Right now, we could delay all the way up to 1,000 milliseconds. So if I hit a key, there's our sound. I also noticed there's a small boop at the beginning too. That's kind of strange. But what we're going to do is we want this range to be, uh, we want to bring it down to 100. So not the biggest delay for core C purposes. And then we also want uh, to move around with a step size of one. That's just like the resolution of how our knob moves. So, okay. Now if we play, a 31 millisecond delay is not, is, is very, actually very quick. So we have our delay, but it's just, just delaying our signal. How do we get that pitch variation? That's what we want. Well, to do this, we are going to use a sine wave function. We're going to get rid of this control here. And the sine wave function is going to... A control it's going to sweep our delay it's going to delay it by so many samples we're going to be changing how much the delay happens by and that will cause our uh our signal to have a pitch fluctuation and so let's go ahead and do that and then i'll explain why as we go so we have sine oscillator we want to bring in a sine oscillator um, there is a sine function as well but it's a little more difficult to work with and there's like extra problems. So we're not gonna deal with that right now. An oscillator is nice already at audio rate. It has a couple advantages, pitch and amplitude knob uh, or ports, so that's very nice. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the output and we're actually gonna run into some problems, but just to show you, we're gonna take the output and the way this works is as our sine oscillator increases in value, we will get a our delay will increase in value. And as it goes uh, down, we will de decrease the amount of delay. And this will actually cause a pitch variation. So what we want is we want our amplitude to always be on. And so we're gonna create a constant of one. So, and I'm gonna draw out some pictures here in just a sec to help cement this in, but I want you to see the effect first. So we have an amplitude of one going in and our pitch, you know, we need to tell it how fast. And so to do this, um, to, in order to make it see the pitch correctly, we need a, a pitch to, uh, let's go to log, uh, frequency. So it's going to take in a, I'm not going to explain logarithmic scales yet, but it's going to take in some logarithmic value in frequency, some linear value, I mean. So if we give it like, you know, 10,000, uh, 10,000 Hertz, it's got to convert that into a pitch that that would make sense to the other scale. I'm assuming you know a little bit about the scales right now, but we want this frequency to actually be 
very low, a low frequency oscillator. So we want it to have a range. We'll make it like the max is five. And if you look at, um, when we want our step size here to be like, we can make it 0 0.01 or something really small. Okay, so the reason we do this, we want it really slow, and you've probably seen this on other courses, is if they ever have like a speed knob for each of the individual LFOs, that's what we've just created here. And so we're gonna take that and hook that up to our pitch output. So it'll create a pitch variation by modulating the delay. So at this point, when we play a note, we would expect to hear our signal fluctuate in pitch. But we notice that when we do that, it's a great, awful sounding thing. I'm just gonna make this mono. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Uh, and when we do that though, we notice we have a problem. We have, let me go and add a signal. I'll add the signal analyzer right here. Where are you, signal analyzer? I'm gonna detach it, keep it on top. So if we lick this, it's ignoring half of our signal. It's ignoring because we can only have a positive input at the delay. And so this, because our, do, because our uh, sine wave goes below zero, we have negative uh, values in our sine wave. We are going to have negative value as in our time and our delay will simply ignore them. So in order to fix this, we are going to create an addition Whoops, I have to click somewhere to type to get back my hotkeys. We're going to create, uh, we're going to add one to the output of our sine wave. And by adding one, we shift the whole sine wave. Whoops, I did not want to do that. I wanted to create a constant. So we've added one. And we're going to put that into the input. Now it'll uh, fix our problem. And you see now it's going back and forth the whole way. It's a smooth thing. So we've accomplished what we've set out to do. But uh, let's go ahead and go a little bit more into detail as to what we just did with a little bit more of an explanation. So I'm gonna whip out a drawing pad for you. This is new, new composing gloves experience. What? Okay, so let me move this in front of me real quick here. Give me a sec. Okay, so what we have here, because um, if you're not familiar with the math of this, this can be a little confusing what I just did. So what a sine wave looks like, if you're not familiar, um, it looks like here's a, here's a graph. So this is going to be our graph and let me erase that dot. Okay. So this is our graph and a sine wave will naturally go from one to negative one. And I'm still on the shape tool. It'll go from one to negative one. And what we want, this is what a sine wave looks like, by the way, you get this from the unit circle. It's not, it's not to scale or anything. It's just a rough sketch. They look like, you know what sine waves look like. So here's our maximum. And here's our minimum. And what we're having a problem with is the fact that this whole thing is negative. So it's being completely ignored by our delay. And so what we want to do is we want to fix that. And we fix it by grabbing our sine wave and pulling it up. And when we do that, our there, my sketch has messed me up a little bit. But when we do that, we have no negative values. And so the whole thing gets moved up by some amount and down by some amount. And uh, because it's always positive, it'll always work. And if you think about it, that makes sense because you can't have negative time. Um, a delay has to occur after you've done something, right? So if our thing happens, if we had like a, a number line and our thing happens here and you want to pull it back into before it existed, like over here, it doesn't exist. This doesn't exist. So uh, it's impossible to deal with something that doesn't exist yet. So it must exist. So um, that's one reason why we need our delay like so. Um, so the, the reason though that it creates a pitch variation is something I'm gonna save for the next video. This video though, I've pretty much accomplished what I wanted to show you. And I have explained, let me go back to my other setup now. So now I've explained why this plus thing is a necessary thing. We've added one and that adding one will shift it up one and everything's relative to that midpoint that we have. So because our midpoint now has become uh, always uh, has moved up far enough to bring our negative values up, we are able to have a our delay work as we would expect and create the pitch variation that we want. Um, now there's not really a nice drawing sketch I can really do for logarithmic um, the logarithmic scales and stuff, but I plan to approach those uh, later on with a little more detailed of like a plan before I do so. 
So anyways, yes. So this is our first delay line. So we're going to recreate this structure several times to get our delay. But now we have to ask our question, you know, why does changing the delay time of our signal actually change uh, the pitch of our signal? You know, that's the real question. This, this, we've just dealt with like sort of technicalities here, but this, that's the DSP concept. So we're going to look at that in the next video. So hopefully this has made sense and you can follow along. Easy peasy, a lemon a squeezy. Subscribe, support me on Patreon, and have a blessed day. Explore the universe.